In this video, we're going to discuss polynomials. A polynomial is an algebraic expression composed of the sum or differences, the sums or differences of power factors. Okay, this is slightly different than the definition that's going to be in your book, but the reason why I'm giving you this definition is because it will apply for future math classes for you. So I need to know what a power factor is. A power factor is any term in the form a x to the n where a is an element of the real numbers and n is an element of the whole numbers. And a reminder, our whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, all the way up to infinity. Okay. The degree of a power factor is equal to whatever the exponent is on the variable, with the exception that if a is equal to 0, the degree is not used. So if a is 0, this whole term would be become 0, and we don't even talk about the degree of something that is just 0. Examples of power factors two x squared, pi x cubed, four. Reason why four is a power factor is because four can be written as four x to the zeroth, and because x to the zeroth is one, that is four. Non-examples. square root of negative 2x squared. The reason why this is a non-example is because the square root of negative 2 is not a real number. Remember, a has to be a real number. 3x to the negative 2. This is a non-example because the exponent is required to be 0 or positive. x to the pi. Again, my exponent has to be 0 or a positive integer. Okay, I'm going to put one more example on here. x to the fifth. The reason why this is an example is my a in this case is 1, and I can write this as 1x to the fifth. So those are examples of power factors and non-examples of power factors. An example of a polynomial would be the 
these types of things added together. So let me just add or subtract these things together. So I'm going to write 2x squared plus pi x cubed plus 4 plus x to the fifth. That is a polynomial because it is the sum or difference of a whole bunch of power factors. This power factor has a degree of 2, this one 3, this one 0, this one 5. Okay, the, poly the degree of a polynomial I'm going to put PN for polynomial. That's an abbreviation that I will use a lot. Other, um, I can also write P of X, which means a polynomial in X is highest degree of the power factors. So this polynomial would have a degree of 5 because that is the highest degree power factor in here. Okay, standard form of a polynomial in X, you write terms in descending degree order. So the first term I'm going to write is the one that has the highest degree. I'm going to use this example. The first term I'm going to write is x to the fifth. And remember, I can do this because addition is um, commutative, so order of addition does not matter. The next degree would be the x cubed, then x squared, then the 4. So if we ask you to write a polynomial in standard form, you write the highest degree first and, if they're, and the lowest degree last. So that's the general um, definitions of stuff associated with polynomials. Now I'm going to give you the formal definition of a polynomial. This is my definition. Then I'm going to give you the formal definition of what a polynomial in X is out of your textbook. And that uh, reason why I did it this way is so when I show you the formal definition, you can understand what it means. So, polynomial of x of degree n is equal to a x to the n. So, I'm going to put a sub plus a x to the n minus 1 plus a x to the n minus 2. And I'm going to keep on. So if n is 5, this would be 5, then 4, then 3. And then I have some a x to the 1 plus a x to the 0. And in terms of, I keep on subtracting here until I get to these terms. So this would be my first term in minus 2, a sub 1, a sub 0. The reason why I use these subscripts and superscripts up there is so that I can use the same letter over and over again instead of writing a x to the n plus b x to the n minus 1 or whatever. Okay, so this is a polynomial of degree n, so n is the highest degree. The a's, a sub i, where 
I goes from 0 to n. I have to be an element of the real numbers. Um, and our n's are our whole numbers that we had before. So the whole numbers are 0 up to whatever n is, counting by our integers. Okay, this is a polynomial of x of degree n. So that's the general form. The a's are called coefficients. Okay, so I'm going to again write an example. 2x to the fifth minus 4x to the fourth plus 3x squared. Notice I do have an x cubed. It's invisible because that's 0x cubed minus 2x plus 5. Okay, this would be a polynomial of degree 5. That's written in standard form. The 2, the negative 4, the 3, the negative 2, and the 5 are called coefficients. This 2 is called the leading coefficient. This 5 here, anything that just a constant here, we call the constant term. And farther along, um, when we start doing some other operations with polynomials, it's really important that you can identify what the leading coefficient and constant term are. The leading coefficient is not necessarily the first term. It's the coefficient for the highest degree term. So it will be the first term if you write your polynomial in standard form, which is what I recommend that you do. Now, I can also have polynomials of more than one variable. For example, I can have a polynomial of x and y. Here's an example of a polynomial of x and y. 3x squared y plus 4x squared y squared plus 3y cubed plus y. The way you find out the degree of a polynomial in more than one variable is you figure out what the degree of each variable is and you add them up together. Okay? then what you're going to do is you're going to figure out which one's the highest, and that would be the degree of that polynomial. Remember, something without an exponent actually has an invisible one there. Okay, so let's figure out the degree of each term. 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 and 1. Now, if I want to write this one in standard form, I am going to write it with the fourth degree terms first, the third degree term second, and the first degree term last. When I get to the third degree terms, I'm going to use the low, um, in alphabetical order, the highest power of x first, okay, and then continue on down that road as many times as necessary. So this one in standard form, fourth degree term, 4x squared, y squared. The third degree term that has the highest power of x would be this one, which would be plus 3x squared y. Then the next power of x would be this one, plus 3y cubed, and then my plus y. So that is a polynomial in more than one variable. In Algebra 2, we don't discuss these very much, but if you're in college algebra, we will definitely discuss these. Um, because polynomials are more than one variable, I'm going to get with circles, um, ellipses, hyperbolas, parabolas, stuff like that. And when you get to calculus, you'll definitely deal with polynomials of more than one variable. Okay, so formal definition, we know what coefficients are, we know what the leading coefficient is, the constant term, and we can write polynomials in standard form, whether or not they are just a one variable or more than one variable. So how do we name polynomials? We name polynomials, and right now we're going to focus on just polynomials of a single variable. So 
So if I have a polynomial of degree n, where n, and we're going to, is, we can classify it by its degree. If n is um, 0 with a equaling 0, Okay, so this would be like 0x to the 0th, which is just 0. That's the, the sum, the constant term 0. We are just going to call this the 0 polynomial. If n is, um, oh, with, I'll make this a equals 0, sorry. If n is 0 with a not equaling 0. For example, I have some constant a times x to the 0. That's just a. We are going to call this a constant. Um, okay, because the only thing I'm going to have left is just the a. If n is 1, an example of something that has a degree of 1 would be like 2x or 3x minus 5. Okay, these both have a degree of 1. We're going to call that linear. If it has a degree of 2, for example, x squared minus 2x squared plus 5, just two examples of that. It's called quadratic. If it has a degree of 3, It's called cubic. Um, four you can call quartic, five you can call quintic, but four, six, eight, even numbers, we're going to call them even polynomials. Five, seven, nine, we're just in general going to call them odd polynomials. Okay, one is also an odd, three is an odd. Okay, but they have specific names for those two odd ones. Two is even, but it also has a specific name. Leading coefficients. So if it's positive and negative, even, odd. What I'm going to describe is the end behavior of a polynomial function, depending upon what its leading coefficient is and whether it has an even degree or an odd degree. And the end behavior is what the graph of the polynomial looks like when x is very, very small, like negative infinity, or x is very, very big, which is positive infinity. Okay, if, and if you remember from previous classes, even things are our quadratics, and our quadratics have the shape of a parabola, and our even ones with a positive x squared term go up. So even looks like this at the ends. If it has a negative leading term, it looks like this. An odd function was my cubic functions or even a linear function. And a linear function with a positive in front of the x looks like this. So down here in the third quadrant it starts and it ends up in the first quadrant. So when x is very, very small, it points down that way. When x is very, very big, it points up that way. And I just flip these over if I have a negative here. Now, in math, we don't just generally use arrows. We use the formal definitions for what in behavior is. So I'm going to write those down. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches, it's going up forever, positive infinity. And remember, f of x is the y value. Here, as x approaches positive infinity, the y goes up without bound, so it still goes to infinity. Down here, as x goes to negative infinity, 
f of x approaches negative infinity because it's pointing down. As x goes to positive infinity, as this thing goes to the right, f of x, or again the y, goes down, so that's negative infinity. For my odd functions, as x approaches negative infinity, as I go to the left, my function goes down. So f of x goes to negative infinity. As x goes to the right, my function goes up. So as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. As x goes to the left, my values go up. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. When I go to the right, my y's are going down. So as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. And understanding these arrows, or the formal mathematical terms of what's happening at the end, is going to help you sketch graphs of any generic polynomial function. Okay? The end behavior of our polynomial is based off of the degree of the polynomial, okay? where the degree is 1 or higher. If the degree is 0, the end behavior is a constant term, which is just whatever that constant is. A constant term is a horizontal line. Okay, or if it's a zero polynomial, it's the horizontal line that is the x-axis. So we've talked about classifying them by degree. The other way that I can classify polynomials is by the number of terms. Okay. If I want to classify them by the number of terms... lowest number of terms I can have for it to be a polynomial is 1. Examples of this would be like 4x cubed, negative 2x, 7. These are all one degree polynomials, and these are called monomials. If the number of terms is 2, 2x plus 5, 4x to the fifth minus 7x, Anything with two terms is called a binomial. Three terms, <coughs> 2x squared plus 5x minus 2, 7x to the fifth plus 7x plus 1. These are called trinomials because they have three terms. 4 plus... We are just going to call them polynomials. Okay? That's pretty much it for just the generic stuff to deal with polynomials. So the types of things that I'm going to have you do is, is it a polynomial? If it's not a polynomial, tell me why it's not a polynomial. Um, be able to write the polynomial in standard form. If I give you a polynomial, be able to tell me what its end behavior is. So basically what's going to happen is as x approaches negative infinity, comma, f of x approaches, then you're going to have blanks to fill in for those right-hand sides. You're going to need to be able to do that. You're going to be able to have to tell me what the degree of a polynomial is, be able to classify it by its degree, whether it's constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, even, or odd, and classify polynomials, whether they're binomi monomials, binomials, trinomials, or polynomials. Um, that's just the generic stuff for polynomials. Uh, future videos, we're going to cover operations on polynomials. Um, so adding, subtracting, multiplying, and down the future, we'll be actually be dividing polynomials, learning how to factor polynomials, and then in general, after that, we're going to come up with graphing all of these polynomials.